So this is another Outlook on Wargaming uh, or Outlook on Wargames video. Uh, topic here is uh, Best Napoleonic Games. Um, what I'm doing is I am responding to, well I'm going to take a look at, and yeah, I guess I'm also responding to a discussion thread um, begun on Board Game Geek. So, so every Saturday, 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I host a video uh, chat on wargaming. Um, I guess you can go to my my um, YouTube channel um, to find out more information about that. Actually, the link is right there in the middle of the screen. Uh, hyperlinked https colon forward slash forward slash appear dot in forward slash big board. So, yeah, video chat every Saturday and the topic for the 9th of April is the best war, uh, best Napoleonic war games. Um, so I put that out um, a week before the 9th and Eric W started this uh, discussion thread on Board Game Geek with the same subject. So I am, uh, in any case, I'm just going to respond to this uh, this discussion thread. Um, Napoleonic Games, first of all, I, I put out the topic Best Napoleonic Games um, almost entirely because I know next to nothing. Uh, well, no, no, that's not true. I have, I have next to zero experience playing um, tactical Napoleonic Games. Um, I can easily count my experiences on one hand. Um, that would include the Napoleonic 20 series by Victory Point Games. Um, and that's certainly not lower tactical level. That's tactical, but not lower tactical. Um, so yeah, I have next to zero experience with uh, Napoleonic games, especially lower tactical level. Lower tactical level meaning uh, units representing companies, battalions, or regiments and brigades. Um, now I've, over the years, I've you know, read up on things. I am familiar with the Labatai series. I own a few Labatai titles. Um, so I mean, I've, I'm generally aware, uh, but I have very little experience. So definitely looking for um, players with experience in all these different games and systems um, to, uh, to explain uh, the good ones and why they're good, the best. Um, yeah, so I'm starting with really next to no experience, um, so I'm looking for uh, input. Um, now, having said that, I'm not not this isn't the same thing as saying I'm asking for you know where to start um, although that's fine too but I fully intend to make my way up to I guess I should say up front my intent is to eventually work up to the deepest most detailed most complex most crunchy you know boots in the dirt um, <laughs> uh, gaming experience, okay, Napoleonic tactical games. Um, so I'm, I don't have any like, I don't have any self-imposed uh, requirements up front. Like, I only want a particular scale or level of complex or whatever. I mean, I want to get up to. I'm, I'm eventually looking for the intense detail. Um, of Napoleonic uh, lower tactical level, but also interested in campaign level, definitely campaign scope, um, and maybe even strategic level. Um, that very rambling, but um, yeah, I'd like comments, commentary, and input on all of the Napoleonic games, different levels, different. Complexity levels, etc. 
Um, so what? Uh, so I'm start here with the original post. Uh, what are the best Napoleonic War games? Uh, what does? What do I mean by best? What does best mean in general? Much less for Napoleonic War games. Great question. Um, but this is exactly what I had in mind when I said best. Um, if you're going to recommend, it doesn't matter who it is. If you're going to, if you get to recommend one best Napoleonic War game, what is it and why? So. <clears throat> um, yeah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't mean. I mean, you, you can talk about the best starter game, or you can talk about the best, you know, veteran war game or uh, Napoleonic war game. Um, yeah. So you're going to explain why the game's the best. So you can explain what best means. Um, I did think that. I did think, at least considering the subgenre of Napoleonic War games, I did think that it would probably make sense to have, you know, best in in category, right? Best in for a particular um, unit scale, best in um, a category for, you know, whatever. Um, <clears throat> oh yeah, in different battles and campaigns. Um, there are geek lists here, definitely. Um, let me see. Um, those geek lists don't immediately look familiar, but maybe I've s looked at them in the past. Maybe I haven't. Not sure. Okay, but uh, we'll go on. Eric W. comes right back. I'm still looking for the best strategic Napoleonic game. That's interesting. There's some really good titles out there, but they all lack in one way or another. Um, so this is a holy grail issue for me. I imagine something multiplayer, but something that captures the nuances of diplomacy and economics not just military aspects. Um, my, you know, it's both a thumbnail sketch and it is uh, offhand. This is all. This is all offhand commentary. This is offhand commentary from study of the Napoleonic Wars quite a number of years ago, but clearly again as a sweeping generalization historians when it comes to the Na wars of Napoleon uh, and the wars of the French Revolution just prior to that um, I mean the military aspects have always dominated um, there are there are I believe good diplomatic and economic histories of the times um, I'm there are good economic studies if I recall correctly of Napoleonic France, um, <clears throat> but uh, the military has still dom has still dominated. So I'm just saying that if a designer wants to give equal weight to um, diplomacy, economics, and military in a strategic Napoleonic game, um, and have it and have it um, firmly uh, based in good history, <laughs> that's that's a big undertaking. Yeah. For Napoleonic operational scale games, my favorite remains Napoleon at Bay. Um, I don't have it. I wish I did. Um, I was actually looking for it recently. Um, so I will continue to look for that game. Uh, I know that's a game that deserves um, <clears throat> A deeper look. Um, the first, this was the first of the famed Zucker Napoleonic campaign series. Now I have a couple of I have a couple of Zucker Napoleonic campaign games. I have uh, Emperor Returns and 1807. Um, not to mention the, the the little Napoleon in Italy game, but um, not counting that one. I have uh, 1807 and the Emperor Returns. So. Um, haven't played them yet. Really looking forward to doing so. Actually, that's you know another yearly gaming goal for um, 2016. <laughs> but um, um, while it's been improved, the series uh, it's still essentially the same overall as it was when it first came out. There's, there's been many titles since, but this retains its place as the number one title. 
not the least of which is due to the incredibly tense situation. Yeah. If I ever got to play the Pratson umpire double blind game of La Vol de l'Aigle, Flight of the Eagle, um, that might supplant the Zucker game. For tactical Napoleonic, by the way, I want to look at uh, La Vol de l'Aigle um, at some point. Don't have anything yet, but it's piqued my interest enough. Um, for tactical Napoleonic scaled games, I'm still at a loss regarding what system is best for me. I am torn between the Gamers Napoleonic Brigade series. Yes, I finally added to my collection with Marenga recently. Happy about that. The Rachel Simmons games. Yes, I have Bonaparte at Marengo, but not Napoleon's Last Triumph. I've actually played Bonaparte at Marengo probably half a dozen times. Uh, I won, and I, I did that. <coughs> played Bonaparte at Marengo a few years ago, quite a few years ago now. Um, I played it, bam, uh, near the start of my, um, you know, full-time march into wargaming. I had so little experience with war games at that point. I wonder how it would be different for me to go back and try it again. Um, at the time, I was thoroughly you know, sucked in to the entire design um, and, and play experience, but I felt like I, well, I guess I felt like I was missing so much. Now maybe that's just a feeling and actually not a fact, but I don't know, I don't know that. Alright, and Eagles of the Empire series. I actually have a lot of those. Haven't played them yet. That's another one that I would, um, I would probably right now, and behind this is that, behind this whole discussion and everything, is that I will, um, I will break out a Napoleonic game. Um, actually, I've already broken out Re Simtax Rivoli, and I will probably play it as my first step. But if I, and and the reason for that is I want something. So I'm. I'm thinking about starting with Simtax Rivoli as a uh, first step toward the Labatai series and if I weren't uh, going towards my first Labatai experience I would probably pull out an Eagles of the Empire game probably the probably the Ilau game but I think I'm going to go towards the Labatai um, experience first um, okay, I have Spanish Eagles too, uh, but I would think I would try Ilau first. I'm, um, I have uh, more of a personal interest in Ilau than the Spanish uh, battles right now. Okay, Stumpter, um, Stump, Stumptner um, comes back. I, I don't think there is even a strategic Napoleonic game that I call good. <laughs> because uh, those I've seen are all severely deficient in either enjoyment, rules quality, or not being Napoleonic except in labels. That's f f interesting expression. I'm not sure what that means. Um, hmm. I had hopes uh, in nations in arms ball me to Waterloo, but they were destroyed on the rules front. Operationally, I used to be a fan of the Napoleon at base series. However, over time, I became rather disenchanted. The combat system worked okay for the original game, Napoleon at Bay, the campaign in France, and its small armies. It does not work for larger battles. The Waterloo or Austerlitz campaigns became became become a farce. This problem has been addressed. Okay, obviously, I would want to know more about this, but apparently, this has been, and I believe it probably has been elaborated on elsewhere, but interesting. Um, hmm. Okay. Um, that does leave the fact that several of the games have badly calibrated attrition tables so that you will likely destroy your armies by trying to repeat the historical speed of operations. If true, that's, that is um, disheartening to hear. Would be a great system if someone went out and fixed that part too. In terms of play, the best Napoleonic operational system I've seen is Napoleon's Leipzig campaign. Oh, I actually have this one. I assume he's talking about the um, bare bones looking um, Omega games, I believe. And I have actually heard good things about this and 
will get to it. Um, yeah, I will. So it's nice to see this recommended. It is tense, historical, not too complex. Unfortunately, it is also visually plain <laughs> to the degree of interfering with play. Um, I found myself applying markers to the counters so I could work out what was where. Hmm. So the same, I know it's very, it looks like a play test version of a game. The same system was applied at higher scale to the Peninsula campaign in War to the Death. That I did not know. I agree that the Vol de l'Aigle system is potentially the best, but I haven't had a chance to try it. Okay. Tactically, which is where I'm focused in particular right now, my, my own attention. I've been an abject fan of the Eagles of the Empire series since Ilau. Very nice to hear. They are tense to play, but also provide good history. <clears throat> Overall, the best bang for the buck. Be aware that although nominally, oh yeah, included under the name Napoleon in the Desert, which I actually have, was done. I think I have every Eagles of the Empire game. I don't think I'm missing a single one. Um, I wonder if I am missing one, but I think I have them all. Was done without the participation of the series designer and has serious problems. Now I wonder what those problems are. Hmm. Well, I guess I'll find out at some point. I used to like the Napoleonic Brigade series in particular for its command system. Unfortunately, neither are coming out at the speed I would like. Yeah. Uh, MBS is officially closed, but there will be a spin off game on the Waterloo campaign. Hmm. An Austerlitz game in the Eagles series is finally being developed. Wow, 20 years after the project was first announced. All right, my rules, last battles, and pulling can be seen as an homage to both of these. Okay, in particular, the Eagles combat system and the MBS command system. Sounds like a nice um, uh, re re envisioning uh, Napoleonic battles. So. Okay, um, hip shot. You missed our okay. Flight of the Eagle game. Flight of the Eagle. Hmm. Next time I call, I, I Flight of the Eagle doesn't ring a bell unless unless I'm just being dense this morning, which is entirely possible. Um, okay, we did the Waterloo campaign. Great thoughts on the systems. Good choices also. I agree about the strategic level. Wow, I keep buying games only to see the lack in one aspect or another. Hmm. This is an interesting thread, right? How, well, again, when you look at the historiography, it's actually not that surprising that a, a strategic Napoleonic game um, is, is lagging so far behind the operational and tactical levels. Yeah, I'm sure there will be much discussion here as to what is best, what does best mean in the meaning of operational versus grand tactical. Ugh. Much of what transpires on the map board must be viewed through the lens of leadership. Who am I and what role am I playing? Hmm. Am I playing multiple roles? When we know when we know that with Napoleonic systems, we can then assess what elements of the game are material to a good, great game system. Am I fulfilling the role of dressing the lines and facing? Am I fulfilling the role of issuing orders to all my divisional commands? Or am I a core commander looking down on high? Does the game cater to charges, counter charges, squares, volley fire, the veritable um, column charge so often argued about? Question mark. Those factors and leader qualities so often evoke the most flavor in a game. Interested to hear what folks have to say. Yes. Um, Brad M. Strategic Age of Napoleon. Now, if that's the game I'm thinking of, I think I have a game that's it's buried. Um, it's a huge box. What is it? Who is it by? The one I'm thinking of has a huge board, beautiful board, areas, and basically 172 scale pieces. I think it has cards. Wait. Oh, or is Age of Napoleon the one with um, with the large chits? Eh. Okay. I'll look later. But it's nice to have a recommendation straight. No explanation, but strategic, Age of Napoleon, tactical, Napoleon's triumph. Again, I can definitely, um, I'm definitely interested to hear a recommendation for Napoleon's triumph, considering how much I enjoyed playing BAM before. Tom H. I like Napoleonic Wars for strategic gaming flavor and that big game feel. Okay, is the Napoleonic Wars the card-driven game? I think it is. A bit erratic and largely ahistorical, but good fun and full of flavor. Hmm. Hmm. 
bit erratic. It's an interesting idea. The use of alliances, political and economic forces, navies, etc. is terrific. Okay. For large scale tactical, I like Bona yeah, Bam and Napoleon's Triumph. Aesthetically wonderful, absolutely. And full of tough decisions, I completely agree. But speed along well, yeah, absolutely no in my bit of experience with BAM, never uh, a drag in the action, yeah. And give a nice historical flavor. CNC naps. Uh, first time this is being brought up is good and provides slightly greenier feel, more like minis. Yeah. Cards give a nice limit to the number of actions you can do and make for some tough decisions. For me though, this falls somewhere between a board game and a minis game, but doesn't quite excel at either. I wonder yeah, I wonder about that. I wonder if I'm not gonna come to the same conclusion when I finally try it. I also like Lazal and Grand Grand Ame. Uh, for small and large scale tactical minis. Yes, I like the recommendation or, yeah, Grand Ami. Lazal, uh, don't have, uh, I've heard of it. Both games play well, look fantastic, and are terrific fun. For Napoleonic tactical level games, close action is fantastic, especially with a large number of players and lots of ships. I pretty much only hear good things about close action, so <laughs> not surprised to see that rec recommended here. Don't have it, haven't played it yet, but I pretty much only hear good things about it. All the above games are highly recommended from my point of view. Alright. Uh, Wolfram T. The early 1800s were a grand time of... Okay. Uber Geek. Uh, how do you Waterloo? Here's the top 10 ways I do. Huh, I'll take a look at that later. Uh, Terry M. Tactically, I've played MBS and Eagles of the Empire. MBS is extremely immersive. Immersive is always a plus for me. The order system is not a gimmick. I really, it really changes the way one plays. That's nice. The Eagle series is lighter, plays faster, and gives a good feel. Works best for the bigger battles, though. Yeah, okay. Uh, strategically, I really liked Age of Napoleon, but haven't played it uh, in a long while. One of the best card-driven, but I lost my appetite for them, I think. Okay, at the operational scale, I have to plug... Ah, yes. Les Marechaux. Um... If this is the, was it Vivictus, I think? Um, three volumes. It's come out three volumes by now. I think I have all three of them. I think I'm ready to jump into the first one. Um, simple set of rules, low counter density, and does Fog of War like nothing else. Caveat, I've only played volume three. I heard the previous ones are too small to really let the system shine. Yes, so I'm very happy to see Les Marichaux uh, mentioned here. Because I, I actually... I'm excited about getting to that. If anything, I mean, Vivictus is always is always a is always a plus for me. Uh, same author has a game in preparation on the um, Yena campaign, cool, which is even simpler but already works very well. Huh. Ooh, actually, that's quite interesting. Actually, Yena campaign done in that type of uh, Les Mata show um, format. Intriguing. All right. Uh, See how much time I have. Uh, ice. Alright. Um, best man to man scale Napoleonic game. Dra Dragoon versus Hazar. Hazar. Um, wow. I don't recognize this. I'm definitely going to take a look at that. The idea of very small scale Napoleonic uh, is actually intriguing. Um, so definitely have to take a look at that. So that's from Maverick. Um, Sean FR, uh, I have a question regarding your thoughts on Hexasim's Waterloo, 1815, Fallen Eagles. I have um, don't have Fallen Eagles, but I've definitely heard things back and forth about this. So, what do you think of the game? If you've played it, and where do you think it sits in terms of historical accuracy versus other games? Cool. Um, I don't have a Napoleonic game yet, and I was thinking of picking this one up. Uh, if you have another recommendation, yeah, this is great to have other people come in and ask questions like this. Because I'm also interested in the responses. Um, Schmidt, as you are French, I allow myself a point of full, full view of Fallen Eagles at a link here. Okay. A good, one, a good point is that players seem easy to find considering the. Oh, yeah. Players are easy to find considering the success of the game. Yes. Um, Stephen G. I've played many Napoleon games since I first discovered Waterloo in 1974. This is nice. A long term. Wargamer's per 
perspective, but currently I find that most of those I used to enjoy and many of the newer games leave me cold. Maybe I've gotten jaded. I've actually gotten jaded. <laughs> I still own and play a few games based on the Napoleon's Last Battle system, which I know nothing about. Um, hmm. But I've grown away from most of those and even sold some. I still like Napoleon at Leipzig. I'm assuming that's okay. That, I'm assuming that's the old, older game, and a couple of others. But that's all. I even sold my original 1976 copy of NLB recently. Something I never thought I would do. I bought Waterloo Fallen Eagles when it came out. I looked it over and put it on the shelf. I'm not even sure why, but something about it left me cold. This is interesting. I still uh, do like SPI's Neighbors as Wellington. Now, if that's the magazine game, well, I guess it also came down in a, in a boxed version, right? I am actually looking forward to playing my, what was it? Yeah, Neighbors as Wellington s and magazine game. So, yeah, I like to hear that. Hear more about that. And Yaquinto's The Great Redoubt. The Thin Red Line is okay. That's an interesting recommendation. Never even thought about Yaquinto's Great Redoubt. La Bataille games are simply too big and too complex. I also have Le Retour de l'Empire from the Vieux L'Empire series. I'll be selling it soon. Hmm. Wow, I wonder why. Tell me why. You didn't tell me why. Um, all right, based on Marx's uh, cons constant cheerleading of this system, I recently picked up the Ilo game. I haven't tried it yet, perhaps later this year. If I like it, Eagles of the Empire Freedland may be a possibility. Boy, I really hope to hear from um, Stephen G. if he plays these later in the year, what he, what he thinks of them. I've never played Avalon Hills War and Peace, but I did buy the redone 4th edition question mark, map and downloaded the rules. I've always heard the campaign game was broken, but the individual scenarios are good. Hope to find out this year. Cool. I mean, I really, I like to hear from a long-term cronyard like this, um, and I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm all ears to hear that he's jaded, but I guess I didn't get why, um, other than um, they're missing something. Okay. Um, um, oh, Simon Dismet. Oh, what? Yep. I am reading and responding these in real time. Yes, I did. I actually didn't preview this one. What time zone are you using for the meeting time? Eastern Standard Time. If I'm back at my PC on Saturday evening, I might sign in for a listen. Uh, oh, this is this is Duke of Chutney. I think I recognize that name. I I think he did. Uh, I think he did some videos on um, La Bataille d'Ortez, which I really enjoyed. Oh wow, that's great. If that's who I'm thinking of, that's great to um, to hear. Uh, Napoleonics is one of the, the time periods I'm most interested in. See, I like to hear from people who have a particular interest in this period, but I haven't really found a system I like at any scale. Not sure why, huh? I bounced off the Days series with 1809, don't really like Napoleon's Triumph as a historical game, and found Labatt more effort than I wanted to invest. I'm probably going to pick up Legion's four-pack, yeah, Legion's four-pack of Peninsular Battles. In the near future, might snap up some of the Golden Oldies if I can find you copies. Now, I wonder if you're not going to like that series just from what I've read. Um, I mean, I've read the rules. I have the, I have the, um, Pratson edition of, um, La Bataille de Leipzig, uh, I think it's called. The Huge, I think it's a 10 mapper. Um, and I, I'm assuming the Peninsular Battles 4 pack is the same, I don't know, same design, uh, I don't know, family. It's at least in the same family. So I am curious whether that doesn't hit it for you. Um, I do, do quite like Nappy 20, but mostly because it's a light hex encounter that I actually find interesting. It doesn't really satisfy as an exploration of history. Yeah, I, I, I wonder about that, yeah. Though I do uh, think it a, does a reasonable job given its easy access generic nature, yeah. Um, okay. Um, I keep, yeah, I've heard this before from Sean M. Uh, I keep hoping uh, someone takes the great campaigns of the American Civil War system, modifies it, and ports it over to cover Napoleonic campaigns. I have heard that 
more than once before. Favorite battle level game is Napoleon's Triumph by a long shot. Okay. So this is multiple, this is really multiple votes for Napoleon's Triumph. Strategic, none really do it for me, but Empires and Arms comes the closest. Operational, Kevin Zucker's games are quite enjoyable. I like using the cards, but I know other others who do not care for them. The system works either way. Tactical, I used to like Labatai, hmm. but with all the different rule sets now, I don't get into it like I used to. Hmm. And then I wonder what my experience will be like when I get there. Hmm. Uh, uh, yeah, habit of victory. I I wanna um, okay yeah I wanna take a oops just hit my microphone um yeah I wanna take a closer look at habit of victory um, yeah I definitely have to take a closer look that one definitely deserves um, a serious look on my part okay I'm gonna end off with the last post here and it is by Stumptoner which is a good way to end it um, so David E wrote um, what do you think of the Kevin Zucker and Mark Herman game The Habit of Victory I thought it was a very interesting collaboration between two talented designers and that Kevin's system greatly benefited from Mark's ideas for operational Napoleonic warfare still good on time this is part of the 2x version of the series with longer turns and larger hexes I've gotten some positive comments about it from others that made it sound like one of the better releases in the series. Never tried it because I spent money for its predecessor, Napoleon at the Crossroads. That doesn't even ring a bell. Napoleon at the Crossroads, huh? Um, about which I got enough negative comments that I didn't want to sink more into the 2x scale. Hmm. The other aspect, purely personal, is that what I liked about the series is to play the campaigns at comparable scale. I'd be far more interested in repairing Struggle of Nations uh, yeah, than in playing uh, Napoleon at the Crossroads. Likewise, if I wanted to do Poland, I'd be more likely to get a copy of, yeah, 1807, Eagles Turn East, than play Habit of Victory. Huh. Interesting. Uh, comment, since I have Habit of Victory and 1807. Hmm. You are correct that the card use in Habit of Victory seems to be fairly clever. The most poignant comment I've seen was, works far better than the cards in the TLNB series. TLNB. Hmm. Um, I've been occasionally tempted to try it. If I saw a cheap copy, I might snap it. Okay, so that's commentary on the subject of Napoleonic Games. Um, I definitely got some votes uh, for best out of it. Um, yep, and uh, and then on the ninth uh, there will be uh, the video chat. Um, so I think that's it for now.